This is a short chapter on experiments, particularly natural experiments in macroeconomics. Now remember what we want to do is to find out what explains the patterns that we've seen in the two chapters on the stylized facts of economic growth and on our increases in living standards. And in contrast to a standard approach in the sciences that you conduct experiments, we do not have experiments at our disposal. So for example, if we have the idea that economic progress depends on education, we cannot go to the president of a country and ask, well, could you please shut down the schools in half of the country for the next 10 years, but uh, leave them open in the other half. And then after 10 years, we look what has happened to these two parts. So that's uh, not possible. So we do not really have experiments at our disposal. However, sometimes some natural experiments happen. One such situation could be seen as the split of Korea into two countries. After the Korean War in 1953, Korea was split into North Korea and South Korea, where the North became a communist dictatorship and the South a military dictatorship, but a most market-based economy, and then it transitioned into a democracy in the 1990s. Now, what makes this as close as possible to an experiment is that both parts were very similar before and immediately after the war. So uh, agriculture was dominant, uh, the industry was destroyed um, before, during the Second World War and then in the Korean War, and the culture was uh, homogeneous, basically. How did the development of these two countries look like after the Korean War? Now here we have statistics for South Korea. Its GDP per capita in 1953 was about 1,470 international dollars. And this increased immensely to 36,100 international dollars in the year 2016. This would be equivalent to an annual growth rate of 5.2% or a 24-fold increase within 63 years. So basically this means that within two generations, incomes increase by a factor of 24, or in other words, people would have a higher income than their grandparents by a factor of 24 within this time period. What about North Korea? Well, they do not really report to international bodies, so we can only guesstimate the level of per capita income in North Korea. And one way of doing that is actually to look at nightlight intensity. So at pictures from space um, of the intensity of light during the night, which is highly correlated with economic activity. So the brighter an area is, the higher is typically uh, per capita GDP, and the darker an area is at night, the lower is per capita GDP. And if we do so, what we see is the following picture. So here we have uh, the Korean Peninsula. This would be South Korea, and this would be North Korea. And you see that the South is bright. You have here Seoul, Busan, and so on. And there seems to be quite a lot of economic activity. And the North is dark, except for Pyongyang, the capital. But apart from that, everything is dark. And this is an indication that there is not much economic activity going on. So this is basically evidence that institutions, institutional settings and economic policies matter a great deal in the long run or can matter a great deal in the long run, particularly if they are really extreme in terms of uh, their uh, setting up extractive institutions or pursuing quite bad economic policies. There have also been other examples of such natural experiments or something that comes close to an experiment. For example, the split between East Germany and West Germany after the Second World War, where the East became a communist dictatorship and the West became a market-based democracy. And the outcome is quite similar. So there are also the West flourished and uh, the East did not. And a bit differently would be the setting with a change in time. So 
for example, there were drastic policy changes in China after the reforms of Deng Xiaoping from 1979 onwards. And also there, a break in the time series could be observed in the sense that uh, the country experienced quite fast growth after these reforms were implemented. What can we learn in general from these examples? Well, as I said before already, institutions, institutional settings and how they are set up can have decisive impacts on long-run economic outcomes. Economic policy in this context is important, particularly in the sense that if very bad economic policies are uh, conducted, then this has severe negative effects. We will see later on, of course, that also many other aspects matter in determining long-run economic uh, growth. And uh, the way we will need to find out what this is, is not via experiments, because such natural experiments are very rare. What economists have to rely on, and this is the topic of the next chapter, is economic models, because they come closest to what we can establish in terms of an experimental setting, where we write down uh, equations that should be able to capture those aspects that we are interested in, in economics, quite well. And then we get the model and we can analyze how the model trajectories behave if we change the parameters of the model. And this would be our experiments, basically, the so-called comparative statics or comparative dynamics in economic models. And that's the topic for the next chapter.